Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz and lesson 11 of the chemistry one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, so we know that if we take an ionic compound like CaCO3, we take this solid compound and we mix it in a flask of water, it's going to break into its component ions. It's going to dissolve, in this case, into Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus. The water molecules are gonna come in, they're gonna surround these ions, they're gonna be solvated, and those ions are gonna dissolve in that water. However, there comes a point if we add too much calcium carbonate, too much CaCO3, where we only have so many water molecules and they just can't surround or take any more of these ions. And then we have a problem. We've reached saturation. No matter how much more CaCO3 we add, that CaCO3 is going to stay a solid. It's not going to be able to dissolve in the water. But there are a couple things we can do to make that dissolve. First, we can increase the temperature. As we increase the temperature, the solubility is going to increase, in large part because we're increasing the kinetic energy of these molecules here. They're going to be vibrating more. They're going to be more eager to break apart into those component ions. And so if, it's, if this ionic compound is more eager to break apart, we're increasing the solubility. Okay, And so that's one way to increase the level at which we'll reach saturation, and then we can dissolve more. Another thing that we can do is we can get rid of some of these ions. If we do that, the water is now able to dissolve more than it could before because we're getting rid of some of these ions that are floating around, okay? This, this is where Le Chatelier's principle comes into play. Le Chatelier's principle basically tells us that if we have an equilibrium reaction like this one, where the reaction can go either way and we increase the products, if we had more of these ions, well, it's going to wanna shift in the opposite direction and use up those products. On the other hand, if we decrease our products, it's going to want to shift in this direction and create more products. And that's something that can come in handy for us. Now that we have that understanding, let's go back to this problem and see what we can figure out. All right, so in this problem, we have a solution that's already saturated with CaCO3. We've dissolved as much as we can at the temperature that we're at. And we want to know what we can do to dissolve more of the solid CaCO3. For starters, we have this option right here, decrease the temperature. Well, remember, we talked about how if we increase the temperature, the solubility is going to increase. We're going to be able to dissolve more. Decreasing the temperature is not going to have the effect we want. So this is going to be incorrect. Our next answer option, let's hop down a little bit and let's look at this one. We're going to add CaCl2. Now, this is an ionic compound, which means it's going to break apart. It's going to dissolve into its component parts, Ca2 plus and Cl minus. If possible, it's going to dissolve. The problem is, look at this, this is leaving us with Ca2+. So if anything, we're adding more product to this reaction. According to Le Chatelier's principle, if anything, we're going to shift this reaction to the left, which is not the direction that we want to go. So this is going to be incorrect as well. Our final option here is stirring the solution. And I know like we picture in our heads, if I throw the solution and I stir it, it's going to help it mix faster, right? Because I'm exposing it to more of these water molecules. But the problem is, this solution is already saturated. So unfortunately, stirring it is not going to help our problem here. This is going to be incorrect as well. However, if we look at this last answer option, add HCl, similar to the CaCl2, this is going to break into its component parts. So we're going to have some H plus ions floating around and some Cl minus ions floating around. Now, how does this affect our reaction? Well, this is using some content that we might have learned before. But you might recognize, looking at these ions, that H plus can react with CO3 2 minus. A lot of the times if we have a positive ion and we have a negative ion, those ions are going to react. And we know that HCO, H plus and CO3 2 minus can react to form bicarbonate. That's actually a really important ionic compound to know because it's a part of the bicarbonate buffer system in the blood. The important thing to know for this problem though is that as these react, we're getting rid of CO3 2 minus. We're taking it, we're converting it into bicarbonate. And as such, According to Le Chatelier's principle, we're decreasing the concentration of product, which means we're going to shift in this direction, and we're going to be able to dissolve more of that CaCO3, which is exactly what we want to do. That means our correct answer option is going to be this one right here. Awesome. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your NCAS score.
We look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.